Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today for the webinar. Uh, I would just like to mention that the event is being recorded. My name is Kusara Konstantinova. I'm the PR and social media manager of uh, the International Biennale of Glass in Bulgaria, and I will be your host today. Uh, here with us is also Lubomira Volcheva, IBG's project manager, project director, and Monika Naidenova, IBG's project manager. Today we have the honor of hearing from several esteemed guests, but before I introduce them, a brief message about the structure of today's event. Here on our virtual platform IBG Connect, you will all have the chance to listen live to the presentation of our three speakers. And um, I'd like to ask you to register for each session in the agenda if you haven't already. While watching the presentations, uh, the, the attendees are welcome to be uh, active in the chat section of each panel and communicate with others, but I encourage you to reserve your questions for the discussion session afterwards, after the presentations. Um, and please keep in mind to mute yourselves unless you're, you're speaking so that we can minimize uh, background noise. After the discussion session with the speakers is over, there will be a networking session. Um, uh, if you want to continue the discussion between each other, you can do that by going to attendees and uh, book a meeting or chat with each other. And now, without further ado, I would like to tell you about today's event and introduce our guest. As most of you know, this year is declared International Year of Glass, which is why the International Biennale of Glass in Bulgaria has decided to organize a series of exhibitions of the Biennale collection, the first of which was opened yesterday. The event was live streamed on IBG Connect, and you can find the recording by going to events and click on yesterday's event. The exhibition will last until the 14th of April. In, at Uni Art Gallery of New Bulgarian University in Sofia, which is IBG's main partner. We'd also like to express our thanks to the Embassy of the Netherlands in Sofia for their support. Today, as part of the exhibition program, we host this webinar with donors to the IBG collection who will share their artistic path, creative research, the story behind the donated artwork, and, don and so on. Unfortunately, we had a fourth speaker, a Dutch artist, Krista Israel, who was unable to join us today. But in, in order of appearance, I will present our first speaker, uh, Tirza Verips from the Netherlands. Tirza is a multidisciplinary artist and designer from the Netherlands. He's gone from drawing, painting, making objects and monumental sculptures through designing entire architectural sites. And he eventually found glass about 12 years ago. He is also striving to make the impossible possible, so he constantly experiments with various materials and techniques. Our second speaker will be Caterina Zucchi, a glass artist and jewelry maker from Italy. She first participated in the IBG in 2019 and donated her work called Light and Shadow. During IBG 2021, she participated both individually and in collaboration with glass artist Lucio Bubaco. Katerina Zucchi specializes in lamp-worked and mouth-blown Murano glass, and her artworks have a bold contemporary presence. And our third speaker will be Jan Hohimstra, a Dutch artist, who fell in love with glass about 40 years ago in Sweden, when he met a certain Swedish glass artist, who introduced him to the sand casting technique and inspired his artistic approach. All three speakers, as you can see, have very diverse uh, experience. So I will now let them give more depth and background to their stories. And I'd like to give the tribune to our first speaker, Tirza Verips. Welcome, Mr. Verips. Thank you, thank you. Well, I have done my very best uh, because I'm not speaking every day in English. So I have to read it. Uh, from a paper because I wrote it down before. Hello? Oh yeah. I'm just sharing my screen. Okay, okay, okay. Well. Just let I'll me start. know if you can see well. Yeah, well, I see the bridge which I designed yes. and made around 2000, uh, but that's only one big project I made. I want first uh, to tell my story from the beginning as an artist. And so, um, well, I'll start. You see, I am an adventurous guy. And I was born at, as an artist uh, at the age around nine, uh, eight or nine years old when I visited the park. And in that park, there was an exhibition of small sculptures 
Uh, and when I look at one of those sculptures from a Dutch artist, for, in, for instance, uh, made by Tairi, I became goosebumps on my arm on account of the beauty from this little sculpture. And I couldn't not understand that a thing could cause such extraordinary feelings. And when I came home, I decided to examine why a thing could deliver such feelings in response by looking at them. And from that moment on, I was born as an artist. I never stopped making things. First drawings, later on paintings and objects and sculptures. I have never been to an art school and I develop, have developed myself as a self-taught man. Tracing back, I can distinguish various, various prolonged periods in my artistic life based on the plethora of fascinations and principles. And over time, my art, artistic interest and capabilities have developed into a wild spectrum. Because my approach is anything straight from earth or anything living wasn't created by man, anything else is. And because of this, we can also, uh, we can always do differently, more beautiful and sometimes even better. In the last few years, my main point of interest has been what's below the surface. It's an odor to life itself, not merely relating to the mental aspect, but also referring to the physical part beyond our control. I made, based on that principle, diverse works with pure, with pure chemicals, which I couldn't control. I'm not a typical glass work. It's one of the materials which I use to express myself. At first, I made sculptures and objects with flat glass, and I piled up glass plates in different compositions, but my dream was to make sculptures in blown glass. I didn't know much about the available techniques, and I had to ask glass blowers if the dreams I had were possible. I designed a completely new type of wine glasses. Next photograph, please. If that's from the wine glasses, is that possible? Can you find it, Cosaro? Uh, yes, there we go. <coughs> so, I asked those uh, different glass blowers if they could make it. And I designed a completely new type wine glass and I asked different glass blowers if they could make it. And most of the time they said it was absolutely impossible. It took me more than five years and a lot of research before I found a glass blower who could make it exactly as I wanted, because I have a great perseverance. In times we can fly to the moon and Mars, no one has to tell me things are not possible. It's a question of willing. And besides my activities as an artist, I always worked in a regular job. In the last 15 years, I worked as a stonemason. The work I donated to IBG in Bulgaria is a green unique vase. Perhaps you can show that or find it. Let's see. No. I hope you have a photograph of that. Of no. course I do. Just just one second because. Uh... Yes. 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 Yes, there he is. <coughs> this green vase, there is enclosed a, a black stone at the bottom. So there is my connection as a stonemason. And uh, later on, I, uh, 
realized Unica, where the stones through their own weight sank into the hot glass. You must have a photograph of that as well. Um, that are quite a few big bubbles and the stones. Uh, yes, left. No, no, more to the left. One more to the, yeah, there you are. There you are. Uh, most of the people told me that it is impossible to uh, 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 have stones into the glass because you must know when they are going into the hot glass, the glass later on has to cool down. And um, when the stone is still included in the glass, the glass is shrinking and therefore then it is cracking and uh, well, it breaks apart. I find out method to do that. And you can see here uh, that the stones are still into the glass, sink into the hot glass, and uh, it became a very be beautiful object. Um, what I want to say with all this is that I like to find out things and that I'm looking for adventure. To give you an idea about my artistic work and apart from expressive art, I designed and made monumental sculptures, as you see, um, perhaps you can show them, unique glasswork, one of a kind handbags. That handbags is uh, 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 really nice. Well, this is a throne I made for the king, uh, completely made out of glass filled with water and also to with little frogs in it because uh, we are a frog land because it's all flat and with a lot of water. I was younger then, you can see that. <laughs> um, but I use all kinds of materials, wood, uh, crystal glass, plastic, stone, zinc, aluminium, chrome, and often combined, I, I, I use all kinds of uh, materials. I designed and made a 100 meter long footbridge for pedestrians and bikes, which you, which was uh, at the first, yeah there, yeah, there you are, yeah. Architectural projects, buildings, pavilions, follies, prodigious war monument, memorials, and even a complete square with a fountain. So I'm doing all kinds of, of, of things. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I designed and developed furniture and lighting, interior and exterior, uh, memorial stones, fashion, and I recently published a book with an anthology of my poems and short stories. In my latest work as an artist, I want to co contribute through my work repertoire to the discussion about the interaction between the climate and our Im impact on it as human beings. I do not regard the climate as purely a natural phenomenon, but also as a metaphor for the society and the way in which we relate to one another and an example is our approach in dealing with and getting rid of products and materials. I'm using all kinds of old materials lately. I'm going to uh, secondhand shops and buy all kinds of things. And then I make uh, new artworks of them. Most of the time, glass is involved. And the di the di this dialogue, determines in large parts of life on our planet. It is both a fascination and an inspiration for my work. After previously, previously having focused on making objects and sculpture with the use of new glass, I switch, yeah, this is a good example of it. I um, switched to reuse ex, uh, existing glass so you can see over here, this is something uh, a little bit uh, uh, pur. I don't know of you or you understand what it, what the material is, but um, 
in this perm, which I uh, 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 colored with a little bit acrylic paint, I used all kinds of rest products, which I find uh, by glass blowers when they throw away all kinds of pieces of glass. And then I make new objects of them. Um, the type of glass which I show you, yes, this is an, another example, um, is found amongst uh, in, in, in thrift stores and secondhand shops, markets uh, uh, as well, and at the dumpsters of the glass blowers. Besides glass, I use uh, other types of rest material that due to its form and or structure provide interesting add-ons to my work. So you have an example in front of it. <coughs> the objects resulting from this effort are reminiscent of primary life forms out of which more complex life forms have evolved. I furthermore use water in those objects, a source of life as a sculptural element in closed forms. In doing so, I connect to the circle of life and my work is therefore a dedication to life itself. I want to thank you for it. This was what I had to tell you. And, uh, and the examples by photographs you've shown, uh, you must have an impression who I am and what I'm doing. I'm an adf adventurous guy and experiment is one of the things I like the most. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, your background and your experience. I have the pleasure of uh, having done interviews with all three of you, actually. So uh, I could say I know I know about you, but yeah. not everyone. So it's very uh, valuable that you're uh, sharing in more depth your stories. Okay. So I would now like to invite uh, Miss Duki. Okay. Hi. 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 Hi, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I will now share my screen again. Yeah. Oh. Can you see well? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Welcome. Okay. I, I can, can I start? Yes, okay. So first of all, thank you for inviting me. I'm very proud to be here with you and share my artistic path. And thanks to Tirza because I found his artistic path very interesting. So, okay. Um, Thank you. <laughs> my creative part, uh, as like you, I'm going to read it because I don't speak English usually. So I need my <laughs> speech right now. My creative path started 20 years ago as a student at Vetro Ricerca, Glass and Modern, Glass Institute, and then as a master's assistant in Murano Island. I was interested in all the glass techniques, but among them I've chosen lamp working and Murano glass as medium. I was very fascinated about the versatility of a torch and the possibility that Murano glass gives. In lamp working, every single action depends on the skills and feelings of a specific moment. And I think that's why I like this technique. In the year 2004, I opened my own studio. And first of all, I tried to find my style and the way to express my ideas and translating them on solid glass beads and glass jewels. In this picture, you can see a few of my creation, blowing glass in this case. These are my four themes, like architectures, irony, and other kind of themes. Well, we can see the next picture, please. <laughs> I am a researcher of forms. I like to find out unusual shapes and make them wearable. I gain inspiration by architectures, geometries, the shadows of the objects, and surrealist art. 
I like add some special effects uh, to my creation using cold working as grinding, engraving, and sandblasting too. In this picture, you can see uh, two solid beads, one sandblasting and the light green, uh, green grinding, grinding, grinded. So you can see the difference of the drawing you can uh, achieve with cold working. And I think it's nice and interesting because you can have different textures to touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next picks, next picture. This is a sequence of solid glass bead, uh, the same um, drawing, some blasted half part. Uh, you can see the difference between a bright side and the opaque, opaque side. So this is a play between the surface um, and the sequence of the bead. I like to create modular, this kind of modular repetition, the same glass bead uh, can become a drawing if placed in a sequence. Next. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you. This is a solid glass bead with dots. Uh, dots on a relief. The transparent, the crystal transparent are leave it on uh, relief. I, I don't use molds to shape in the glass. I like to work with free hands and few tools only. Next, this is a bracelet in composed by a solid bead uh, with the line, red line on top, a little bit engraved. So this is the special eff effect, very tiny, very uh, minimal design, but I like it. Uh, I, 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 this is my style really, so. Next. <laughs> Next, <laughs> that's me blowing. So after years of glass jewels made by solid glass beads, in the 2012, I began blowing glass as self-taught. And after many failed attempts, I realized my new wearable glass composition in blown glass. That's me uh, during the working process. This is a well, round uh, bead blown with crystal transparent. Next, please. <clears throat> now you can see the difference between a uh, blown glass bead and a solid glass bead. Uh, adding volume uh, and lightness to my creations opened me up to new opportunities and gave me the chance to improve my abilities and explore my interesting forms. I don't use any mold for modeling glass. I work in the air using heat, gravity, rotation, and few tools or unconventional tools. Sometimes I made my own tools, a little bit homemade, but very useful. In this peaks, you can you, in this image, you can see the difference between uh, the volume of a blown glass and a solid bead. You can see the red line more stretched and very defined than a solid bead. We can see the difference. And this is the lightest, this is part of the lightest shadow necklace um, that I have donated to the Bulgarian Biennale, but we talk uh, after about that. Next image. Okay, white. I also want to convey to my glass jewels feelings and emotions and make them a means of communication. A jewel can express our personality and say something about us. A jewel can talk without using any words. Can be also something fun like, like my ironic creation. This is the head into the clouds necklace. So add into the clouds is about per person that have the head always in lost in thoughts. And the gray uh, cloud is the bad weather. 
sometimes can occur. Next. This is the thorny necklace. Uh, this is a harmless, but it seems very aggressive. All these beads are blown by mouth. This is a, a brown, dark brown color. And the, the piece on the side, left side is unblasted just to break the composition. Sure. This, <clears throat> are, these thorny um, elements are made by the scissors, scissor during the um, working process when the glass is still enough hot to be worked and modeled. Mm. Next, next. <clears throat> mm. This is the <laughs> this is the boobs a necklace. Um, well, I imagine a lady not with a string of pearls, but with a string of boobs. Very impertinent and delicate creation. All the beads are blown and the little nipple are put during the working process when the little round pink uh, bead is still enough hot and not too cold to have the nipple on the surface. <clears throat> Next. And about feelings and emotion, I made this uh, necklace body jewel. The name is Private Messages. It is composed by blown beads and messages that they keep together the composition. Private messages speaks about emotion, mental bond, thoughts, and the spoken words. Talk about what I can see and keep intimately protected within us. Oh. To, <laughs> to assess, to show the content of the glass elements, they must experience a change that in this case will be the breaking of the elements themselves. But will a contact with reality, private messages, emotion and thoughts be able to survive? It is a complete and incomplete work at the same time. Other messages can be added or revealed. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and now, as Tirza, I like to uh, embody uh, the different material with glass. Oh. This, is, this is concrete. <clears throat> this is my lightweight uh, body jewel. You can see the concrete inside the glass bead. Yeah. I, I wanted to realize the glass stones. You can see the lightness of the glass and the heavy part represent by concrete inside the glass bead. Wow. I, I made the glass bead and then uh, when the glass is cold, I put uh, the concrete inside and I wait that to become stiff. Oh. <laughs> Next, this is the bracelet with the concrete inside. Oh boy. Next, please. And uh, this is my ballast project. Uh, ballast uh, is composed by blown beads and concrete as well. Ballast is a weight used to improve and maintain stability, balance, and control. But it can be also an obstacle, a hindrance, a difficult nuisance to get rid of. Ballast <clears throat> is balance and an impediment as well. This Necklace, this necklace is um, will it will be exhibited, exhibited in Chica Museum of Contemporary Art Museum in May in South Korea. So is ready to be shipped to South Korea. Um, you can see also the uh, sun blasted on the surface, maybe a little. Um, next image, please. And this is the bracelet. But it's a sculpture as well, I, I think. 
next. But I do very playful jewels uh, like this bracelet. The name is Circus. I like the way that ribbons can play with the body and with the hand. And every single element is made by blown glass bead by mouth without using any molds. Next picture. And you can see where, where it's on the hands and ribbons. I like also primary color, so they are always impactful. Mm. Next image. And this is one of my la last project, the Yolk project. These are rings, blown glass beads, and then cut and engraved on the edges. Sure. Ne next. <laughs> and this is the necklace, very big. You can see the very big Yolks explodes, <laughs> explodes in the egg. I do the glass bead, the white glass bead, like a egg, then I cut and engrave the edges, and then I make the big yolk. And this is the yolk project. Hmm. It's wearable, it's very balanced, it's not heavy, and it looks very bulky, but it's wearable as well. Next. Now, <laughs> it's time to introduce the first body jewel made by me that I consider as an art piece, and that's why I decided to donate to, donate to the Bulgarian Glass Biennale. Light and Shadow is the name. Light and Shadow talks about contrasts, is about add, uh, adding and removing, is the game between light and opacity, between shade and color. The black color element scratching on the side breaks the composition by contrasting the, chrom the chromatic sequence. The elements, one closer to another, create a rich and elegant accessory. Their surface finally, finally sandblasted for half and unchanged the volume of the elements. But black lines hide or conceal green lines. Is the sandblasted surface opaque or helps the bright side to be more brightness? So that's, these are the questions. I made it in the year 2017. <clears throat> so it's not so long time. This is the detail. You can see the part bright and the other side sunblasted. Next. Mm. I, sc I scratched this piece with um, glass paper <clears throat> and water very rude, but nice. Next. And now it's, it's time to talk about my current plans. And one of my current plans is the collaboration with the master Lucio Bubacco. This collaboration was born in the year 2019 and then stopped because as you know, pandemic situation stopped every, everything. We try to work uh, on distance, uh, shift the elements and try to, well, adjust the situation. But well, this is the first necklace we made, Atlantide. The name is Atlantide. Uh, you can see the Baroque uh, elements made by Lucio Bubacco. He is very famous for his figure and for his skills on lamp working technique. Oh. Yes, I, I, well, I don't know. I, I think it's the number one because it's so difficult working Murano glass in that way. Very difficult. As you know, Murano glass loses hot uh, very, very fast. So you should consider this feature of Murano glass. Very difficult, really. So you can see a uh, diornato part on the left side made by Lucio and the other uh, gl blown glass bead made it together. How we work? We work with two torches at the same time. I do the base, 
so the blown glass bead. At the same time, he works for making the figure. When he is ready and when I am ready, I pass it to him, my blown glass bead. He stitch on it with the heat, the figure. Then he passes me the piece again and finish the piece making the hole. And then we put immediately into the kiln to cooling down properly, properly because as you know, glass needs to be cooling down in the, in the best way. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Then, then I made the other blown glass beads and the clasp. And as you know, Lucio is Baroque style. So we called our necklaces uh, contemporary Baroque. Next. <clears throat> These are few moments um, of the working process when we work together <clears throat> at the same time. Here, he is making the figure and preparing the blown glass bead. Uh, and this is the moment when he pa I pass to him the blown glass bead. Next. We made a zodiac collection to celebrate the born of uh, the birth of Venice um, last year. This is the Virgo necklace. I use always a ribbon <coughs> to make um, junction and connection. All the pieces, the black pieces are blown with a silver leaf uh, on, on the surface and the ornato elements, the be the solid bead and the figure are made from Lucio, as you can see. Oh. Yeah. Next. This is the Libra necklace. In San Marco Square, there's a clock, gold clock with a zodiac sign. So we want to celebrate Venice with this collection. Next, <clears throat> this is the drops into the sea necklace. In this necklace, necklace we work separately. Uh, he makes he made the solid bead with the figure, and I made the, the design and the other blown glass bead. We, <clears throat> I also, <clears throat> sorry, like to hide the clasp to have a whole object without interruption. So the clasp, maybe clasp, you can see at the right side, the little part of the ornato. This is a triton and these are triton and siren. Next. This is the winged, winged horse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. And this part is made by Lucio and the other blown glass bead and the design is made by me and the clasp is on the right side. Little bit hide on the composition. Next. <clears throat> this is the dolphin's necklace with blown glass bead and solid bead with um, figures. And the clasp uh, in this case is also hide it. Sure. Next, and this is the black scorpion necklace. <laughs> this is a very tricky necklace. The scorpion, ornato scorpion is very, very difficult to make and Lucio is a master on, on it. Using black color is a challenge, a very challenge. This other piece are made by me, the are blown glass bead, a little bit engraved on the edges. The scorpion obvious, obviously is made by Lucio and uh, you can see on the solid bead. And the clasp is the tail of the scorpion is the clasp. So it's a little bit high as usual. Next. <clears throat> this is our tasty menu necklace. So if you want to have a <laughs> lunch <laughs> or maybe dinner in Italy, 
This is uh, our testing menu. These bits are all blown by me, uh, all the figure are made by Lucio. And in this case, we work at the same time. We do two torches and we pass this. We pass the pieces and stitch the, all the elements, fishes and vegetable, meat on the surface. Next, this is the creation world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next, carrots or I don't know, tomato, potatoes. Um, next. Ah, this is our nympha necklace. <clears throat> we made the rose uh, at the same, working at the same uh, element together with two torches. Then Lucio makes the leaf, leaves and the ornato element. I made the um, round blown beads. And the ornato element adorn the neck, the neck because I like to uh, adorn all the neck, not only the front of the neck, but all. So you can see the clasp in the right side, hide. So this is a little junction, but it's very, it's very light. It's only 20, no, two, 200, 200, um, zero, no kilos. Well, okay. Like, well, it's light. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> when it torn, uh, you can see the neck adorn. The tail of the rose. And the, or, and the ornato. Well, oh, as, as, <laughs> as I told you before, I like the modular repetition. So the same element um, placed in the sequence um, to make a drawing. This is my uh, carnivorous necklace. You can see the red and uh, white covered, uh, the red covered by the white color and um, blue. And then I cut the element and engrave the edges. So you can see the detail of the edges and um, very aggressive necklace, carnivorous. Okay, the, the clasp in this case is also height. And this is the creation when it works. And this is the clasp. This is another necklace uh, made by the concept of the modular repetition with a silver leaf in, on the surface, put on the surface during the working process when the the glass is still hot, but not too much hot to burn the silver. Oh, yeah. This is the detail. I like how the silver open on the surface of a blown glass bead. And you can see the difference between the light blue part and the black part. Next. This is the necklace one it wore. And this is a, this, uh, my roots necklace. Um, you can see the modular repetition as well. But when I, I change the hole, hole, holes of the elements, I can make new and different drawings. Next. This is the necklace one it wore. And these are my, this is my zero bracelet. Uh, I like the way that volumes play with the body. This um, bracelet is made by blown beads uh, only without molds. And the two elements are keeping together with the um, elastic cord. Next. And you can see this playful image. I also like to play with the elements and my jewels to find out new possibilities and new point of view. Next. These are the all together. And one of them has a string so you can be worn as a necklace 
or as a bracelet as well. And this is the one when it works. I like the using the color like a paint. I produce my stringers by myself and then I melt on the glass surface when they are hot. And when I blow the glass, the colors become became something like a paint. So I found very interesting and I love this kind of decoration. Next, <clears throat> these are rings. These ring, rings will be exhibited in Tokyo next May, I think, and Metropolitan Museum contest. I like also the action that the body can make to find uh, the new position of the object when it worn. This is a still life of the rings blown. I also love like <laughs> with other material like stone, tears. Ah, 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 there you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that very much. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you can keep the stone in this position if you keep the rings in this position. So it's about the balance. Next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I use the stone as mold. And that's, I use the, okay, no problem. <laughs> These roses are made by <laughs> me and Lucio. <laughs> this is our bouquet necklace. And I made uh, the round bead and Lucha at the same time made the roses and then we passed the elements and we put on in the, into the kiln to cool it down. And this is, I think this is the last image. And okay, thank you. <laughs> That's me. I hope you find, find, found interest in my presentation. And uh, well, I think that that's all I think. But if you have any questions or if you want to ask me something, please do it. Oh, it was really interesting. It's amazing. Uh, Thank you. And the, the project you do, it's, uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. I feel very <laughs> happy. Thank you. Me, Thank me you. Too. Me too. I like it very, very much. And I don't know if you know it, but I am living in Apeldoorn, a city in the Netherlands, in the middle of the Netherlands. Okay. And we have a big museum yeah. and they are collecting um, all kinds of jewelry oh, from okay. artists. Okay. So I want to talk later on with you uh, okay. to ask you if it is possible to organize a kind of an exhibition of your jewelry. Why not? In this, <laughs> yes, in this museum. Uh, uh, because I'm working together with all kinds of Italian artists in the past. Uh, for instance, I organized an, uh, a big exposition of artists from, uh, let's see, um, sculptures. And okay. they came from the northern part of Italy. I, I can't remember the name of the city uh, at this moment, but uh, um, Santuri. And they make sculptures in wood. Okay. Uh, uh, most of the people in Holland didn't know what those guys were doing over there. And I organized a very big exhibition uh, of those guys here in the museum uh, in Apeldoorn. But okay. because they are specialized, uh, this museum is specialized in collecting and exposing uh, 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 jewelry. Okay. So that must okay. be very interesting. And I will contact the director and okay. show what you are doing and then perhaps later on we can do something together. Thank you so much, Tirza. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Okay. 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 Well, thank you all. I love the diversity. And uh, we can now uh, see also uh, Mr. Hochimstra's presentation because he will also add something different to this uh, discussion. So please, Mr. Hochimstra, you can share your screen as well. Well, uh... I'm going to try it. <laughs> uh. 
I think uh, here I am. Okay, we see the map. You see the map? Okay. Yes. I uh, want to tell you something about my life and my work, of course. And uh, as I uh, told, I uh, live and work in the Netherlands. And uh, I, I live in the northern part of the Netherlands. It's called uh, Friesland. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, 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 part of uh, the country with uh, an own uh, culture, own language. So normally I speak uh, Frisian instead of uh, Dutch. And um, it, it's really flat up uh, in the north. We don't have uh, mountains. We don't have even a hill. Uh, it's uh, most of the part is uh, even below uh, sea level, but uh, we are protected by uh, dikes, uh, of course. Um, I am a boy who, who loves the countryside, you know. I, I, I hate the big cities, the noise, crowded. Um, and I will show you my studio. Oh no, let's. First, it's me. We do another picture for. This uh, was in uh, 1953 when uh, uh, I was uh, born. Uh, I was born in a, in a very small village, about uh, 500 inhabitants. And I grew up in a traditional family. My father, he was a carpenter. He also made furniture. And he was uh, the hardworking uh, man who has to earn the money for his uh, family. And my mother, she was the hardworking uh, housewife, didn't have a job. Her job was uh, to take care of uh, me and my uh, brother. And uh, at that uh, time, there was no kindergarten in our village. So no possibility of go to school when I was uh, four years old. And normally you do that in the Netherlands. But uh, when I was six, I, uh, I could go to the school. And the idea of my parents was that uh, I have to, uh, to study. And uh, I, I, they didn't think it was a good idea to go to an art uh, school because artists didn't uh, earn a living, they thought. And it would be better to be a teacher. So I started my life as a teacher. Here you see my studio. Let's have a look. It's a wooden building and this is inside. Part of it uh, is uh, the gallery. Uh, my kilns uh, are there. And uh, it, it's uh, the gallery, it's also my, my playground. It, it's my, my glass school where, where I teach uh, uh, people who are interested in, uh, in glass. And this is uh, the piece uh, which I donated. It's uh, called uh, Journey. Uh, as I told you, my parents thought it, it would be a good idea to become a teacher. And that was what I did. And the best part of that uh, profession was the holidays, I think. There were a lot of holidays during the year, especially in summer, we had a holiday of uh, six uh, weeks. And uh, I uh, built a camping car together with my father and uh, we, we could make journeys with it. And as you see this uh, uh, artwork, it symbolizes also a journey. The key on uh, this piece is very important for, for me. And I will tell you later on. In that time, we went a lot to Scandinavian, Norway, Sweden. And uh, I, I like the nature, I like the, the quiet surroundings. I don't never go 
to places where a lot of people are. So we need to go to a camping site, always uh, had a nice place uh, along the lake or the river in nature, canoeing, fishing, swimming, walking. That was for me an ideal vacation. And then we met uh, people up there, we became friends and they told me about uh, Glas Riket. It's a um, glass area in the Southern part of Sweden, Kofta, Buda, and there you find the glass factories. And we went there and uh, it was not crowded. There were no many tourists. It's about 40 years ago. And you could walk in easily and had a talk with people who worked there and, and talk with the glass blowers. But it was the first time that I saw glass as I have never seen it before. I knew glass as window glass or a glass in my spectacles, but here the glass was hot, it, it was orange, it was fluid. And the glass blower didn't interest me. It, it was only the material which, which uh, I, I thought was wonderful. And I had it in mind, that material, I, I had to do something with it, but I didn't know what. And uh, uh, I knew what to do with it when I saw an exhibition of Bertil Wallin. He is a well-known Swedish uh, glass artist. And actually he is uh, the, the first who uh, tried to make molds in sand and uh, fill the mold with uh, hot glass. And for him, it was easily to uh, get with a little, uh, the glass out of the kiln and, and fill the mold. And then I thought this is so interesting what he did and what, what I saw in his sculptures, it looked as it was my own world. So I, I read about him, visited expositions of, of him, uh, bought books and videos. And I also wanted to make molds in sand and do something with it, hot glass. That was for me the perfect combination. Where the sand make molds, the combination of, of sand and liquid glass, it, it fits me. And actually the child in me awaked at that moment. They called it sand casting, make molds in sand. So one of my kilns in the studio is filled with sand and I, uh, print in, in sand, I push materials in it, uh, and then the mold is ready. And what I don't have, I don't have a kiln with hot glass whole day. So I have to put uh, flower pots above the molds, fill the pots with uh, glass pellets, with glass, and then heat, uh, the glass so it becomes uh, uh, liquid and it fills the molds. I also want to do it all by myself. I don't like to go to a, a glass factory where I can use uh, the guns. No, I, I want to do it uh, myself. As I was busy like this, the child in me grew and, and got, got bigger every day. And I liked that uh, feeling, you know, I, I can wonder and discover like children do. If you observe the children, the small children, it's fantastic how they discover the world. They, they wanna try everything. They have an eye, open eye, open mind that they look at the details. And uh, I thought I had to do the same. 
I was an adult, but I, I didn't like to, to be an adult. I like to be a child and play like a child. Mm -hmm. And I think life is, is like a journey. And in this piece, you also see a key and it's important to have a key. You can close doors and you can open other doors and discover the, the world around you. And the world can be very small. It can be your own garden or, or the, the, the village where you live. You needn't go abroad, but you discover it. And I collect all my impressions, like you collect uh, pictures, and it's also my inspiration. My next artistic level is uh, getting the glass out of the kiln when it's really hot, when it's about 800 degrees. I take it out. Of course, I have protected uh, gloves and helmet. And then I want to form it by hand. I want to model the glass. And that's, yeah, amazing. It, it's really magic. You, you take the glass and you cannot force the glass. It's like the glass uh, tells me, if I love me tender, you know? You have to be in perfect harmony with the glass. And it's not me who, who can tell what I want with pressure. No, I have to do it softly. And I have to feel what the glass wants and the glass has to feel what I want. And yeah, I, I like that very much. Here, and after it is formed by hand, I put it back in the kiln and then it can cool down. Uh, my last uh, art uh, work is I was selected to, to make uh, uh, artwork in a, a park. It's a, a park with uh, more sculptures in it. And of course, I, uh, I had to use uh, glass, but I wanted to use uh, mirror glass. Um, but I, I don't know if, if it's strong enough. It, it's a public uh, space in uh, I don't know, don't want that, that uh, the mirror glass uh, can be easily damaged. So I asked a professional uh, sportsman in the Netherlands to help me. I uh, wanted to uh, test the glass and uh, I asked a golf player, uh, ice hockey uh, player or soccer player and I put them in front of the mirror and asked them to, to hit the glass with uh, all the power in their uh, body. And well, let, let's see what, uh, what happened. So I now know, know that the, the glass is uh, strong enough and uh, I can uh, use it in the, the park. So th this is what I'm doing at the moment. Cool. Thank you very much for sharing also your uh, experience. Uh, I think we have a lot to, to discuss because you're also uh, different and uh, that's why I'd like to now open the discussion and perhaps ask you all, have you tried each other's techniques? Because for example, sand casting, have uh, Dirza and Katerina, have you tried it? Yes, yes. Yeah. At school many years ago, also in Switzerland, uh, to Creative Glass, I did a workshop about uh, sand casting and it, it was amazing, but I really, found interesting all the techniques, really. Uh, it depends uh, what you want to achieve, but 
every technique is very interesting, but I tried sand uh, casting too. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you that, uh, that the techniques are interesting. It's always the glass who, who is uh, amazing. Yeah. I, I always wonder how, how it's possible you can uh, heat the glass and, and it becomes uh, fluid and, and it cools down and it, it's really hard glass again. And every time it happens, it it's uh, yeah really Mag great. Magic. It's yeah, magic. It's, yeah, it's really magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But not only with uh, hot glass. I mean, you can make also uh, very beautiful sculptures uh, with ordinary glass. Uh, for instance, I made a, a very big sculpture uh, once in a castle. And I used for that uh, uh, car windows <laughs> yeah, from glass, uh, about 300 of them. And I all smashed them. So you get uh, just like uh, a mountain of sound, uh, of salt yeah, uh, from glass. And then I used flat glass, uh, making uh, triangles of that from three millimeter float glass. And I uh, uh, melted them in an oven in a, in a, in a, in a circle way, uh, which were going to the top of this salt mountain, uh, the salt-like mountain of uh, those smashed car windows. And it was really a beautiful sculpture. So as another uh, uh, way of using glass, not warm glass, um, I... Um, I made 100 plates of two millimeter glass, 100, um, one meter high, and I wow. piled them all together so. So it was just like a, a big house, which was uh, made out of glass plates, and it was really beautiful. So with cold glass as well, you can do the most beautiful things. Is my experience. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me yeah. Too. Me too, me too, me too. So it's amazing. You've been testing. You've been doing all those tests to, uh, to, to, to find the solidity in your glass. It's really interesting. Thank you all of you for for this uh, presentations because it's uh, it's amazing to see how how well. For instance, uh, between Katerina and, and Tirza, it's amazing how you basically try similar things and um and uh, you can you can share this uh, experimentations i was wondering if uh, uh in a way you're tasting solidity uh as you both are uh work are working on wearable glass so in connection with accessories and uh, things that a person can wear. So do you have to refer to some engineering uh, techniques of uh, wearable things uh, in, in fashion or uh, how, do you, uh, how do you explore these? Um, do you have to mix with another techniques that are far from glass art at the end um, about making these objects being wearable and solid and um, um, not fra fragile because we are used to see sculptures, but we are looking at them. We're not touching them, so this is very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you talking okay, to both of you? Well, okay. basically, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, um, I think when you um, know all the different techniques and recipes of and forms of glass, you can decide well, the goal you want to aim so um I, it, it depends on the design i like big and bold uh, textures and shapes something you can see uh far from uh, from the person i like really to embody the body with glass creations mm -hmm. and well i i think on fashion as well but i normally dream um, the ladies bigger. or men bigger and wearing something very bulky but light uh, walking in the street not on on a runway also uh, only sorry only but in the street maybe uh, at a, pa a party or 
Christmas time. Um, you can wear what you like when you want. Uh, that's my well. That's yeah. What I think. Yeah. yeah. So you don't need a specific moment, but oh. the moment is when you want to wear it. Or, so when you feel comfortable with it, you can wear it and. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering if you have to refer to some specific, uh, um, not fashion as a fashion, as, as a yeah. Vogue fashion, but as a specific fashion techniques, not, uh, well, how to call it, like wearing, wear, uh, um, object wearing techniques that make, that make sure that, that these things will stay in one piece <laughs> while wearing. That's why I was, yeah, was I, I, I guess thinking about, thought. especially with the hand, uh, handbags. This is even uh, yeah. even because it's utilitarian. It's not only. Uh, may I react on that? May I react on that? Because I made handbags of glass. Wow. Yes, I know. <laughs> Great. Yes, there was an example. Uh, perhaps uh, Cosara can show one, uh, which I made out of blue glass. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, yeah, this one. Okay, great. Yeah, nice. this is uh, a glass uh, uh, made handbag uh, with gold uh, uh, in it, and I used pearls and gold thread and so on and so on. And I made a few of them. Not only not only this one, but more. Yeah. Uh, the, the museum I spoke to you over has bought this one, yes. Uh, but I also was invited into Czechia uh, by a, a, a mode uh, a designer, one of the top mode designers in, uh, in Czechia, uh, to have a, a photo shoot with my bags, which I made with all, of all kinds of materials, but uh, also to uh, 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 quite a few in glass and because people think you can't make things out of glass which are wearable and that's not true they can be uh, used and uh, it depends on how you make them yeah so uh, what Katarina is making uh, wearable uh, 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 jewelry I like that very much because most of the people think that you can't use glass for that. And that's not true. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful material. <laughs> and yes. You can, and you can do all kinds of things with that. And therefore, I want to make the statement to make uh, glass handbags that it is possible, people. You can make them have glass and they can make and you can make them beautiful as well. Yes. Yes, break break the rules, the tradition yes, of glass. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Don't break the glass. <laughs> no, please. No, no, no. No, no please. No, no. <laughs> no, no, but. Yeah, this is what I was wondering if if there is some specific things you have to keep in mind while uh, uh, making uh, a piece that is supposed to be touched by um, by a person it's not something that we see most but it's you're basically making it to be war, war uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so, so okay. this is what yeah. I what I was wondering if you have to refer to some special techniques that are used in different domains like in fashion to make sure that if there is some 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 um uh, some instructions that you have to follow that make sure that it's it's staying in the right place that it's not um, yeah. um, that something is getting more pressure than another uh, yeah this is what is coming this is what my question was more about techniques the first thing is balancing because the composition should be balanced on the neck mm -hmm. okay and you should choose the right uh, position and when you wear it you the, the necklace could should be must be stay in this position mm -hmm. of, on the position you are chosen but to do that the composition should be balanced yeah. first first of all balancing is the secret mm -hmm. then i always give all all the advices to my customers like for example to avoid <coughs> damages you can close the necklace in front of you and then you can turn around the neck, the clasp. This is the first advice. 
Normally, if they damage the a necklace, it's because they put on a table and they put on this necklace everything. Right. Bags, stuff, or coat, uh, everything. Uh, but when you wear it, it's, it's impossible to break it. So just a few advices and just to close in front of you and that's it. And also depends if I did, if I do bracelet, I blow not so much to have a um, resistant mm. piece. So it depends also if I want to uh, create bracelets or earrings, earrings needs to be, need to be very light. So I blow too much the glass and well, if they fell down, maybe it breaks, it breaks, but mm. okay. I can do it again and but normally I do a not so very light blown glass bits, so you can handle uh, easy. It, they are easy to handle. So mm -hmm. I see. I have a but very you, yes. May I ask you where are you living in Italy? Tuscany, Livorno. Uh, Livorno is a city on the west side, on the sea, uh, near Pisa. Do you know the tower? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> 20 kilometers from Pisa. Okay, okay. And are you working in, uh, in Venice as well, in, uh, uh, with glass flowers in, in Venice? Yes, I, I, I did a workshop in Venice many years ago. And when I want to work with Lucio, I take the train and I meet him in Murano. And, but yeah, yeah. I, do, I know a I know few glass blowers in Murano. And, but now the situation in Murano is very uh, particular because the price of the gas is so high. So oh, yeah. most oh, yeah. of furnaces are closed. But if you need to meet someone for your work, I can try to find a contact uh, through Lucho okay. as well. But do you have an own studio? What? Do you have your own studio? Yes, yes, in Livorno, in Livorno. So in you Livorno. can make glass for yourself in your own studio? No, because I've got to only one uh, station, working station, uh, is not ready to host okay, okay. students. Normally, yeah. if I want to do classes, I move, I move and reach students. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. And how about exposing? Where are you uh, <laughs> exposing mostly? Do you do you? Uh, I imagine uh, locally, uh, maybe maybe in Holland. If I <laughs> if I understood you, you both are um, uh, exposing um, clo close to you, uh, Katerina. I, 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 from what I understood, you are um, participating in different uh, um, international events. So yes. How how do you feel about? Um, <laughs> your situations in, in, the, in that sense. <coughs> well, Are you happy? <laughs> uh, well, uh, after two years of, of, of this crazy situation with COVID, well, I feel I was always felt in the world. So I don't feel only in Italy or Europe. My vision is open to all the world. That's why we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm very curious. I really like to share and I really like to know different culture and the way to work, working glass. Uh, the situation, my situation now, um, I'm working a lot with the Image Museum in Florida. Now I am following a few contests uh, in Japan and South Korea. I always try to take in part to international contests because I can meet or maybe they can know my, it's a way to uh, introduce my work uh, to different uh, person and artists. And I also work for a retailer because I have a, my artistic part is a side of me. And uh, I have also a commercial part because I need to earn money easily <laughs> for work, <laughs> for live, for living. So now it's a nice an, an period for the art side and the commercial side, but we'll see with the international 
situation we don't know mm -hmm. well, we, what will happen uh, next so, week okay. maybe maybe yeah, so. maybe tomorrow <laughs> but, so but, uh, do you um, do you also expose um, uh, alone individually uh, do you have do you do you uh, organize your own exhibitions uh no never i don't know why no. i always i always uh, be in a, a collective exhibition right. for example now in portogallo in portugal Mm -hmm. I've got a um, collective exhibition uh, made by uh, us by um, Netherland. Oh, Ned see, uh, Luis Acosta is the curator, mm -hmm. is a um, ju jeweler. Uh, he makes jewels with paper because I also um, follow a few different paths. Uh, something, uh, one path is glass, another mm -hmm. is glass jewels, and another is contemporary jewels mm -hmm. so with all material so i'm taking part on few uh, exhibition collective with other artists that makes contemporary jewelry in with different materials well gold or silver but also paper resin or woods and textiles so <clears throat> i follow i'm following these three different ways Yes, yeah. to keep my mind open to all the possibilities of gla for glass, for the glass, but also for the contemporary jewel as well. You inscribed in several different uh, yes, ways. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jan, Jan, um, may I ask you, um, you do have your own exhibition space. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, are you often invited by uh, by others to join exhibitions? Uh, I would like to do that uh, more. Yeah. I would like to uh, exhibit uh, also on other places, or I sometimes do, but but that's not often. No, because. So if there are possibilities, I would uh, really love to. Yeah, because when I look at myself, I'm an old guy, you know, I'm not a youngster anymore. <laughs> um, so my, I've always been in a, in a, in a, in a gallery in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that's uh, about, well, let's say 10 years ago. And, but because I was so busy with big projects, uh, making, uh, building bridges and whatever, uh, I had to stop uh, with my gallery. And my problem is at the moment that after, because I'm an old guy, yeah, nobody wants to have you anymore because you are not, That's not you true. Are young and promising anymore. <laughs> so, Lucio, Lucio Bubacco is old too. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? I've never, I've never, I, for the latest uh, years, I'm nearly never invited to. You have are. A You're here. Well. <laughs> that's that's really a problem for me at the moment because I can't expose nowhere. Well, Mr. Mr. Tirza, you are more than welcome uh, with the Biennale. You are our guest, and I, I, like, I like to be there. Please don't feel this way. <laughs> because I love Sofia and I like your country very much. Well, you should. So, uh, for the next times, I you can be assured I'll I'll join you again. Yes, uh, please. In, as yeah, you, Holland. I feel I have to repeat that. Well, well, not repeat. Remind that you know the Biennale is intergenerational, intercultural, international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're we are. Uh, this is the goal of the Biennale to to get together. Now that's our motto. So uh, it, there is no exclusion on our side. You can feel. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, but when I listen to Katarina, she is uh, uh, having exhibitions all over the world. Yeah. So all right. Quite yeah, 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 collective. Yeah. Because how, I, are I'm... how are you doing yet? How are you doing yet? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I okay. Because you can go on Google yeah. and make a research of open call yeah. or call for graphs artists. And if you pass the well, the competition, you can yeah, yeah, exhibit. Yeah. So you should take in part to the selection. 
Yes, of course, I know that. Go on Google, make a search. <laughs> now, well, there's a deadline now for the Triennale in Japan. The deadline is uh, middle of April in Kanazawa. So take, take a look on Kanazawa Triennale. Okay. And are you selling work there as well? As well, yeah. 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 Because it costs a hell of a lot of money to ship your things. Yes, I know, but it worth okay. it worth the. I, I think for me it worth um, experience because I live in a small city, very small yeah. city. I am the only yeah. one working in glass like that, yeah. Yeah. so I am out of the world. And <laughs> Google and networking are my um, yes, they are very important for me because they place place me in the world, yeah. and they give me the chance to sell my creation and taking part to uh, selection exhibition but i can really suggest to you all to make um, frequently a research on google about open call for glass artists or call for artists in well japan american yeah. europe because there are a lot of things to do and yeah. i'll write down this i'll okay. write this down Thank you for okay. your uh, information. <laughs> <laughs> you are you welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. I'm going to write you on direct on Instagram to maybe to remind you the name of the city Kanazawa, if you like. Or... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, would you have any suggestions? Um, because we would like to launch some uh, channels on IBG Connect on the app, which is now also available uh, in full mm -hmm. on, 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 on your phones or where you can join it on your desktops. But um, we would like to create some channels in them thematical channels uh, that can uh, put together uh, artists from who, who, who are involved with the Biennale, who are interested in the Biennale. Uh, of course, we can launch anything. So we can go through techniques, through materials, anything. Is there something that is important for you and you would like to meet more artists that are concerned by it as well. But uh, that is said, it's also important to meet uh, gallery owners. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not, not only artists, but yes. uh, for us, I think it's uh, meeting the, the gallery owners are also very important. Uh, maybe there is something you, you could organize. Or... <laughs> yes, and it's also uh, one of our objectives. So for the moment, is we're, we've been working on building our artist community, which is not excluding in IBG Connect uh, any other person who is interested in art, could be an investor, could be a, a gallery or a museum or anything. Uh, so yes, this is on, uh, let's say, not only on the list, it's, it's been happening, but it's, it's a longer process. Uh, we also ourselves uh, have the, the, well, I would say the ambition, but it's a plan uh, to be able to show your works, um, to, 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 make a, to make possible to show your works in, or sell your works uh, on distance. So this is something that also we are uh, working on. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the moment, we would like to um, make this space, the IBG Connect, uh, more dynamic. So this is part of the process. And we need you to be involved in it because you are the actors in it. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm asking if there is something that um, that is um, that is important for you, and that you would like some something that is uh, uh, a thematic that you would like to discuss and find other people who are concerned by it. it. I don't know. Maybe you don't have anything in mind right now, but if you do, uh, you can let us know. You can just tell us. Oh, I need to find people who are working in Japan, and uh, I'm looking for this kind of. Um, techniques and uh, I need to know where I can do that or if I find some if I can find somebody who can do that for me or anything like that uh, you can always let us know and we can launch a channel for you and try to to, to, to animate, animate the topic that that is important for you it could be anything because uh, what Jan is saying now to uh, have connection with galleries I think that's very important um, because uh, <laughs> Every artist wants to show his work and want to sell it also too. Uh -huh. 
And knowing artists, it's very interesting to know what they are doing and how they are working and so on. But for the artist itself, including me, uh, it's very important to have uh, contact with galleries and have the possibility to sell work. Um, and I can give you an example how difficult it is uh, to get in touch with people because uh, the glassware I made, where, uh, uh, the wine glasses and water glasses and so on, I showed them for the first time in Milano at uh, um, um, uh, the very big uh, uh, design uh, uh, event over there in the Dutch pavilion. Um, I can't mm. even. Uh, Pavilion del Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mobile. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that. And you know what? <clears throat> After the research of five years and finding at least a guy who could make it. I showed it for the first time in Milano. And I tell you what, not one reaction, not one. Mm. So why do you think? I don't know. I don't know because it's, it's ex absolutely exclusive. Most of the glass blowers told me in the beginning they couldn't make it at all because it was impossible to make. And um, well, at least I got it done in Czechia. <laughs> Uh, by Yiri Pacinek, uh, a master glass blower, uh, which I like very much to work together with. But it shows how difficult it is to get in touch with people who want to show your work. For me, at least. I agree with you. It costs an awful lot of time. Yeah. Yes, I know. I know, but it's part of the work. Yeah, well, I'm for, yeah, let, let me explain because I really like to work alone in my own studio me with too. music, but yeah. unfortunately, social network became part of the work. Yeah. I, unfortunately, because I prefer to speak in person with people, but social media uh, allow to us to be in the world. And they are very, they are very powerful if we use in the right way. If we use in the right way, they could be really, really powerful. Museum, uh, Imagine Museum of Glass in Florida found me on Instagram and I start to sell my creation uh, uh, in the bookshop. But they didn't meet me in person just trust in my work seen uh, see in <coughs> instagram okay. so also other customers for spain or private um a customer they contact me and they want to buy something from my e-commerce but if you don't take take care of your instagram unfortunately it's not so easy to make a connection and make your uh, work uh, known to the others. Unfortunately, that's that's re the reality. I ate it. I ate, <coughs> but that's reality because um, I have contacts. Uh, well, I live in this small city and nobody knows glass. If maybe I could uh, live in Venice or in other country, uh, not so tight to the tradition, maybe it would be easier. But I am here, and so I have to use in the right way social media. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I I understand your feelings about it, about them, but they they could be very very useful. Yeah, I think Instagram is one of the, <laughs> the items and uh, the uh, media which you must use as an artist. Yeah. 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 You should take care of your Instagram and yeah. keep it updated, your feed and well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be trying to, to be a mediator in that. This is our goal. So uh, yeah, it's a process. So we yeah. can, we are not able to, to assure that right now, but it's, it's in our, we are working yeah. on it. 
so that's um, why uh, that's why I'm I'm trying to understand so I, I can see there are different views and different uh, let's say uh, practices on, on on your side on uh, and expectations as well and possibilities so. Um, Using using the, the app uh, or the app, the, the, this this platform that is free for you uh, is 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 actually helping us, you know, build it. So that's 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 what I want to say that we are trying to to uh, grow it and um, okay. and make possible galleries to access to it to have interest <laughs> and um, and eventually hopefully furtherly uh, be able to mediate, help you to, to get to those people. Also with the Gla European glass museums, because sometimes I don't know contacts with muse glass museum, because if they don't <coughs> know, 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 me, know me, they could not <laughs> uh, consider me. So sometimes it's difficult to have uh, the right contact with museums like Victoria and Albert Museum or more important museum that they have a part uh, of the museum um, that they have so many beautiful glass uh, art pieces. So I think I need to uh, stay in, uh, try new contact also with in European museums, I, I think. Okay. Well, I'll do my very best for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I really want to. Uh, I, well, I, I wrote tons of emails. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, to museums. But if uh, you don't know the right person, nobody consider. Uh, well, yeah, so I know. You, you always have to be introduced by another person i don't know why so but, yeah, but that's uh, that's that's true because <laughs> but you know what i know the director of this museum very well so i think i can connect it okay thank and you I, i'm gonna do so and for you awesome i, <laughs> I want you. i want to tell you um i was invited by uh, um, uh, people in the netherlands and they call themselves uh, uh, the friends of friends of modern glass and uh, they asked me if i could organize an, uh, uh, an exhibition uh, of people around me which i know uh, um, uh, working in glass glass artists and make an exhibition in one of the uh, cultural centers here in apeldoorn are you mm -hmm. interested in that yeah sure Jan, you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. So, so, okay, yeah. I do have your names. Yeah. And I'm, I'm busy doing a, 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 that to organize it. And yeah. uh, in the <laughs> coming weeks, I have a meeting with, uh, with, with the rest of the people which I'm uh, organizing it with. And I'll let you know. Thanks. Okay. And don't forget okay. to mention IBG, please. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're around. Happy, All the way. Happy, <laughs> yeah. We're happy to see this connection already happening. So <laughs> very glad. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. see how 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 uh, useful it is to uh, to talk to each other and to make uh, things possible to exchange uh, our works and uh, perhaps organize uh, exhibitions for each other. I like to do so. And uh, I do my very best, and I'll contact you later on by mail, uh, sending you the information I have, Jan, you as well. And uh, well, perhaps we can do nice things in the world. Oh, sorry, I think yeah. so. Yeah, of why not? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, sure, sure. Because I like to make the world better <laughs> most of the time, and I like I like to make. Uh, 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 beautiful things for the world, and if you look around it at, at this time in Ukraine, what the people are doing, they are smashing everything, uh, and, and I can't. <laughs> yeah. That they are absolutely mad. Yeah. I do have a phone call. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, I have to take that. Oh no. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. It's me. It's me. Hello. Wow. Yours, huh? <laughs> yeah, boy. 
So uh, I, I just muted. So you. I think the right way to do the um, network is sharing, and well, um, that I think that's the most important thing, as I have told you before. And I really love to share information because every artist is always work alone in his studio and maybe doesn't think to well grow as a, a person that can share information uh, events or exhibition as well i think yeah i agree with you <laughs> that's the point we are artists because we like to to create yeah and you know not the other part where we what want yeah. to do yes yeah yeah Yes, I'm always working alone as well, and uh, well, I like it in a way because uh, yeah, it's good. You have to concentrate, and I have a great workplace in my garden over here, so I can make everything I like. I have all kind of machinery, and uh, if I want to make glass or blow glass, then I'm going to a glass blower in the Netherlands or even in Italy or wherever in Belgium or in Leerdam uh, here in Holland and of course in Czechia because I like it very much over there and uh, well it's a great job to be an artist I can assure you yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. rock and roll <laughs> yeah. Yeah. thank you thank you all very much for this extremely interesting and I think productive event yes. that today. We're very glad to, to be hosting it. And um, yeah, again, if you'd like to see the opening of the exhibition that happened yesterday, you can find it in the yesterday's event on IBG Connect. Um, so yeah, we, we wish you uh, the very best and keep us posted on your collaborations. We'd be happy <laughs> to be part of them. Well, we will Thank do. You. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much for what you have thank done. You. Thank it you. Was, it was great. Thank you. thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Let's keep bye. in touch. Bye bye. Uh, we do. Bye bye. <laughs> yes, we do. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>